Hello, everybody, and welcome to Uncle Todd for Christ. Thank you for joining me today, guys, on this Tuesday, November 5th, 2024. It is 421 p.m. Eastern Time as I speak and record. Praise God, praise God, praise God. Thank you guys for joining. I continue to praise him for each and every one of you. I think we got another new subscriber or two. Welcome, welcome to the channel. Welcome to the family. As long as we're the family of believers, maybe you're Maybe you're on the fence. You're not sure if you believe or not. I like to say welcome, but get off the fence because Satan owns the fence. But thank you for joining. I do continue to thank you guys as we grow together, as we finish up part four. Anybody new uh, this season? We're going to try this again. Right? There's most of it. 365 devotions for a peaceful spirit started in January 1st. Have not missed a day. Praise God. Folks. Before we get into the uh, part four, this conclusion, I just want to say something real quick. God has put on my heart. I said it's uh, November 5th right here, right now for me. Today is election day. Whether or whenever you're watching this video, guys, understand something. This is going to be the 46th, 47th president. Whoever wins, whoever wins does not change who God is. Think about it, folks. I just went and looked at some of the past presidents and some of the histories and the things we've seen. None of that. None of that has changed who God is. We've got to understand that. And real quick, I just got to read this scripture. Got to read the word, folks. This is Romans chapter 13, verses 1 through 3. Let every soul be subject to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except from God. That's where our authority comes from, folks. And the authorities that exist are appointed by God. And we pause there. Understand, no matter who wins. If God wants this person in office, they're going to win. If he wants that person in office, they're going to win. We know that God works all things for good for those that love him, for those that were called according to his purpose. Guys, God, what, what the enemy meant for evil, God will turn into good. We have got to maintain our faith in God no matter the outcome of this election. Who cares who wins? God is still God. We're still going to our eternal home. Amen. Therefore, whoever resists the authority resists the ordinance of God. And those who resist will bring judgment on themselves. For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to evil. Do you want to be unafraid of the authority? Do what is good, and you will have praise from the same. There's that discernment, folks. Not every politician does the work of the Lord. God will give you the sermon. So guys, we're just going to leave it alone on that. I'm about you all. I'm done with this election stuff. It does not change who my daddy is. But with that being said, love and peace part four. Uh, guys, we got, let's see. I've highlighted today. I think I originally had uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, the love chapter. I believe that's what it is anyway. That's a short chapter, guys. If you want to read that, please read that. Again, I believe it's 1 Corinthians 13, but the Lord took me to 1 John chapter 4, verses 7 through 11 is what's highlighted. Please click on that highlighted link. Read that slowly. Read that slowly. But our lead all verse is Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 9, and the word of God says this. Enjoy life with the one whom you love all the days of your fleeting life, which he has given to you under the sun. For this is your reward in life. Yeah, guys, make, we just can't. There's not enough time in these videos. I try to keep them around 10 minutes. There's such things as godly marriages, ungodly marriages. We're not going there today, folks. So in conclusion, commitment, communication, and compliments will be hollow at best unless you care for each other using the power of the love described in 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 8. There you go, folks. The guys in the background, I had to go old school. Michael J. Fox, come on. Uh, Back to the Future, The Power of Love, man. The 1980s, I don't, folks, you, I know we'll disagree, but the 80s was the best music ever. And when I saw when I saw this, I glanced ahead and I saw that, and that's where I saw 1 Corinthians 13, it, The Power of Love. And just Huey Lewis in the news sang it, but Michael J., Guys, there is power in love. And where did I do with it here? I don't where the scripture is where it says God is love. I think that's in 1 John 4, folks. That's why I've got that highlighted. Yeah, 1 John 4. 
1 John 4, 7 through 11, where it speaks about that God is love. Um, love never gives up. This is out of 1 Corinthians 13, folks, but please still still read that if you'd like. This is out of the message translation. That why This is why it may sound different. Love never gives up. Love cares more for others than for self. Love doesn't want what it doesn't have. Love doesn't strut, doesn't have a swelled head, doesn't force, force itself on others, isn't always me first, doesn't fly off the handle, doesn't keep score of the sins of others, doesn't revel when others grovel, takes pleasure in the flowering of truth, puts up with anything, trusts God always, whew, always looks for the best, never looks back. Guys, right there is my two favorite. Trust God always, never looks back, but keeps going to the end. Love never dies. Whew. Make it a point to practice this love every day. There, you go. Guys, it's not guaranteed. It's not automatic. We do. We got to practice this. Again, if you're in a marriage, you got to practice this stuff. Get these scriptures in you. Let it speak to you. If you're talking about your relationship with God, let this speak to you. It takes practice every day. Communication. Taking time to listen, all these things we just read. Humble yourself. Put your other, the other, your spouse before yourself. Do something. Just do something out of the out of the blue, guys. Come on. Uh, pray for each other, and fueling and fuel your marriage with the power of love, so that you may enjoy life with the one whom you love all the days of your fleeting life. For this is your reward. And at night, when the lights go out, take time to adore that special person God has made just for you. Amen, folks. And again, for me, I can look back at both of my marriages. I can look at my relationship with God now. Take this however God is putting on you. Maybe somebody's watching this right now that is struggling with your marriage. Best thing you can do, whether the two of you are talking together or not, Get in the word of God together. Read these things together. Pray. Force yourself just to pray to God and let the Holy Spirit just reunite you guys. The same with anybody. It's just trying to build on their relationship with God. Read these scriptures. Say, God, reconnect me with you. Bring me back to when I first fell in love with you, Lord. Remind me how much you love me, God, and help me show you how much I love you. And guys, I say it all the time. I think one of the best ways we can show God how much we love him is getting in his word every day and prayer, making that alone, intimate, quiet time, giving him a chance to respond every single day, just like with your spouse. And again, God, don't ever go to bed angry, whether it's your spouse or with God. Amen. So guys, thank you for joining me as we conclude part four of Love and Peace. I enjoyed it. It was a little bit different for me, but it really spoke, and I pray it did to you guys. So please get that scripture in you, and until tomorrow, Wednesday at 6, enjoy the rest of your day, and we'll see what the Lord says then. I love you guys.